On the news, federal government approves pay increase for civil servants on consolidated salary structures in commemoration of the 2024 Workers' Day. Ipman threatens closure of uh, 30,000 filling stations of a 200 billion naira debt by federal government. And reps reassures Nigerians amid fuel scarcity confirms 1.5 billion liters of premium motor spirit PMS available. Thank you for joining us on News Now. I'm Simisola Atiko. The federal government has approved the pay increase of between 25 and 35 percent for civil servants on the remaining six consolidated salary structures. A statement signed by Head of Press National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission, Emmanuel Onjoku, says the increases took effect from January 1, 2024. The federal government also approved increases in pension of between 20 and 28 percent for pensioners on the defined benefits scheme in respect to the six consolidated salary structures with effect from January 1, 2024. However, President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Joe Jairo, has criticized the federal government's pay rise announcement, describing it as mischievous moves when discussions on minimum wage increases have not been concluded. Ajayro further organized, said organized labor has agreed on 615,000 naira as the living wage for civil servants. Well, let's discuss this disagreement between the federal government and organized labor over increase in living wages. Public affairs analyst Nelson Ekujimi joins me on the news. Thank you for your time, sir. Now, what's your take on uh, organized labor's disagreement with the federal government's salary increase on the remaining six consolidated salary structures and rather insisting on the increase of minimum wage? Well, thank you very much. I think... Um, Response from labor is not unexpected because uh, naturally labor has been clamoring for the review of the minimum wage. And today being May 1, Workers' Day, they had expected that the government will make an announcement with regards to the outcome of the committee charged with, you know, uh, reviewing the minimum wage. And uh, as we speak, the labor is also a party to that discussion. And that committee is yet to com complete its work. So I, I wonder why labor is in a hurry when they are aware that the committee has not completed its work. I don't know under what premise the government of the day would have announced a new minimum wage. Uh, we should not forget that um, men, uh, arriving at a new minimum wage takes into consideration so many factors. Uh, that committee is comprised of you know, representatives from the private sector, from the state government, from the uh, from the federal government as well as the labor union, so it, it's not a one man it's not a one man show because of the effect. Don't forget, in 2019, even after the federal government announced the 30,000 naira minimum wage, as we speak, a lot of uh, you know uh, some of the stakeholders who were party to that agreement are yet to implement it. So I think we should uh, admonish labor that we recognize that you know these are not the best of times for labor. But they must be rational and realistic to wait for things to be done appropriately. In that way, we all will be on the same page and will have that industrial disharmony. All right. So now the pay raise is for certain categories of workers in the public service. Does this seem fair, considering that it is every Nigerian that is facing the current economic hardship in the country and not just government workers alone? Well, the, the, the pay raise is for the pay raise is for federal government workers on the consolidated salary structure. We have workers in the private sector. We have workers in the state government employment. The federal government cannot decree or cannot, you know, approve a pay rise for workers in the state because they are not that, they are not under its payroll. What the government has done is fulfilling its responsibility to these categories of workers. Even including pensioners under you know it's you know uh, it's a salary system. So if we are talking about uh, all Nigerians being under the same you know uh, economic challenges, I'm sure you know uh, it is impossible for you to work in company A and expect a pay rise from company C. Your salary or your emoluments will be determined by the organization you work for. So this pay rise for for workers in the consolidated 
salary structure, six in numbers, is a fulfillment of maybe government agreement with those workers because we have not had, you know, representatives of those unions or those categories of workers come out to say, oh, this is not what we agreed. So if you now say with everybody, well, you are, you are very sure, uh, even you yourself, where you are working, as well as I that you are speaking to, we can't expect a pay rise from the federal government because we are not federal workers. We are not a federal government employee. Kudrimi, thank you for sharing your insights, your thoughts. Moving on, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has expressed solidarity with Nigerian workers and reiterates his administration's unwavering commitment to prioritizing the welfare and prosperity of the workforce in the state. Sonwolu made the statement on Wednesday while addressing workers during the May Day celebration held at the Mobolaji Johnson Arena, Unicorn Lagos. This report has details. The Mobalaji Johnson Arena, Uniko, was filled with civil servants from all sectors to commemorate the 2024 Workers' Day. Speaking on the theme, People First, Governor Babajide Sonwolu reaffirmed the Lagos State Government's commitment to building a more inclusive and equitable society where the interest of workers receives the attention it deserves. The governor acknowledged the economic challenges facing the nation and commended workers for their resilience, adaptability and courage in the face of economic hardship. Our services remain uninterrupted and that our states continue to stand tall even with these very difficult challenges that were faced. And so this year's theme, which is very apt, People's First, resonates with me personally, but it resonates deeply with our own administration. It resonates with the philosophy of why we're in government because it underpins our firm belief in prioritizing the welfare of our people, the welfare of our citizens, the welfare of Lagosians is important to us. The governor also underscored the importance of solidarity and collaboration in overcoming challenges, reaffirming his government support for labor unions and organizations advocating workers' rights and welfare. And therefore, as a government, we recognize the fundamental principles of fairness, of equity and justice in our various workplaces. Every individual, regardless of their gender or background, deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. We will, res we will continue to uphold these principles and to strive to create an environment where all workers feel valued, feel empowered, feel safe, feel prosperous, feel wanting, and feel inclusive in everything that we do. In his address, the Lagos State Head of Service, Bode Agoro, also lauded the dedication and commitment of the Lagos State's workforce, recognizing their indispensable role in driving the achievement of the state government. Let me state that we are not oblivious of the fact there are still pending issues to be resolved with the labor issues regarding the improvement of welfare and well-being of staff in some agencies. Nonetheless, let me seize this medium to ensure the labor centers of our continued commitment to chart a way forward in addressing these issues in the best interest of the state government and the affected staff. On her part, NLC State Chairperson Fumi Sesi commended the Lagos State Government for the 20% increment in salary of workers, full implementation of 35,000 Naira wage award, and prompt payment of salaries. Today, as we gather here, we are hopeful to receive the announcement of a living wage and not an increment on our salary. NLC nationwide, we reject in totality any increment in our salary, what we are waiting to hear today is announcement for the, from the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the living wage, new minimum wage. Anything short of that, NSC will reject it in totality. As the state continues to navigate economic challenges, the government says it remains steadfast in its resolve to prioritize the welfare and prosperity of its workforce, ensuring a brighter future for all residents of Lagos State. Simi Soladikun, TV 360 News. 
The federal government has urged Nigerian workers to keep the faith, saying it's leaving nothing to chance to ensure a soft landing in the face of harsh economic realities and high cost of living in the country. The Minister of State for Labor and Employment in Kiroka, Onye Jocha, disclosed this on Wednesday while addressing Nigeria workers at the May Day celebration in Abuja. She announced that while the Trapatite Committee on National Minimum Wage was yet to conclude its negotiations, workers will not lose anything as the new minimum which will take effect from May 1, 2024. TV 360's Emeka Mako files this next report from Abuja. Workers from across various sectors of the economy turn out in their number to mark Rice Annual Workers' Day celebration. As is common with events like this, the issue of workers' wage dominated the speeches here, and specifically the national minimum wage. The Labour Union leadership assured workers that they will settle for nothing less than 615,000 Naira as national minimum wage in the negotiation with the federal government. Also warning that the negotiations should not exceed the end of May. We have prayed for a two-year lifespan for the new act with automatic adjustment triggered by inflation suppressing 7.5%. Every employer with five employees and above must comply with demand robust monitoring and strict penalties for non-compliant state governments. We have based our figures on real data gathered from our responses nationwide, ensuring that our demand reflects the true cost of living for an average family. Our message is clear. Anything less than a living wage condemns workers to poverty that the government restrain itself from the use of violence in civil engagement within the industrial relations sphere, an immediate reversal of the unilateral hike in electricity tariff, entrainment of service reflective tariff, and stoppage of segregation of consumers. The government has been locked in talks with labor unions over the new national minimum wage. The Vice President Kashim Shitima who represented the president at this event, said the federal government is expecting the recommendations of the committee on the new national minimum wage before making a definitive decision on the national minimum wage. The committee, in collaboration with labor leaders, has been diligently working towards proposing a new national minimum wage. Unfortunately, despite concerted efforts, the committee was unable to reach a consensus at its last meeting. This shall be resolved soon, and I assure you that your days of worrying are over. Indeed, this government is open to the committee's suggestion of not just a minimum wage, but a living wage. Adding her voice to the issue, the Minister of State for Labor and Employment gave the assurance that whatever minimum wage is eventually agreed on, its implementation will be effective May 1st. The ongoing efforts by government to pay wage awards to workers and the review of national minimum wage by a tripartite committee involving the representatives of employers, workers and government towards ensuring that every worker receives a fair living wage that enables them to live with dignity, provide for their families and contribute to the growth of our economy. We must therefore see each other as partners in progress and utilize the initiatives already provided by the government to turn our challenges into new opportunities for national growth. Away from the wage issue, the unions called on the government to urgently address the current fuel scarcity across the country and ensure the resumption of normal activities. The House of Representatives Committees on Petroleum Resources, Downstream and Midstream have addressed concerns over the ongoing fuel scarcity in Nigeria, assuring citizens of the availability of premium motor spirit, also known as petrol, in the country. Speaking to journalists from the House of Representatives Press Corps, the chairman of both committees, Ikenga Imo Ugochinere and Henry Okoje, provided insights into the situation, assuring that a supply of 1.5 billion litres 
liters of PMS sufficient for 30 days is ready for distribution to marketers. The committees attributed the fuel supply disruption to logistical challenges faced by transport vessels moving products from offshore to onshore locations. However, they emphasized that these challenges have been addressed following engagements with key stakeholders in the distribution chain. Today, the report we are getting suggests that the fuel queues have started reducing and product have started arriving the petrol stations. We urge Nigerians not to engage in panic buying, not to be emerged in an unnecessary rush to buy products. As a country, we have a storage of over 1.5 billion liters, which can be last for at least over 30 days. More products are arriving and more products are on the high sea. The challenges that caused the destruction was the logistic issue, and that has been handled with the maritime shuttle vessels, as we speak, which was to be moved product to marketers who are on standby waiting to serve the people. The logistic issue has been resolved completely, and hopefully supply to stations will increase in a few days. We strongly frown at the activities of middlemen who have taken advantage of the short disruption of supply to maximize profit and generate inordinate gain for themselves at the detriment of our people. We we'll call on security agencies to support the NMPCL, NNDPRA, Patron, NATO, and other key stakeholders in the distribution value chain so as to ensure that such art of economic sabotage that has to do with hoarding, arbitrary increment in price, product diversion, and smuggling are detected and dealt with. Our people have been through a lot in the last few days, and we must not plunge them into further pains. We appeal to all traders and those rendering services not to unduly take advantage of these temporary challenges could you be cleared in the next few days. The federal government has presented checks of 2.7 billion naira as compensation to stakeholders affected by demolition of structures from Chenage Zero to three kilometers on the right-of-way for the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project. The Minister of Works, David Umahi, proceeded over the presentation of checks at uh, a stakeholders meeting held in Victoria Island to flag off the implementation of the compensation of those affected by the demolition of structures which include tenants on landmark property. The minister says the flag off of the program was in line with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu for transparency with human face as it executes developmental projects across the country. Umahi also says stakeholders affected by the demolition of infrastructure along the right of way would be compensated adequately in phases, adding that the project and other coastal roads in the pipeline, which would be done with concrete pavements, would increase connectivity, foreign direct investment, economic revolution, among other benefits for the country's development. And I assure Nigerians that so far, if there will be any activity that is lost, then we have opportunities between kilometer zero to kilometer 700. And so I bless Mr. President, I bless our country, and uh, it's my pleasure to unveil the new design route to the glory of God. And I wish to flag off the compensation from challenge zero to challenge three in a total sum of 2.75 billion. That is very, very ambitious. Very ambitious. And it's my pleasure to invite the director of design and the controller to call the people and uh, give them the symbolic amount agreed and to assure that before 1 p.m. tomorrow, you will all get you are allowed as agreed. It's time for a break, but coming up, CBN stands firm on loan deposit ratio policy to curb inflation. We'll have details when we return.
Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories. The federal government has approved a pay increase of between 25 and 35 percent for civil servants on the remaining six consolidated salary structures. A statement signed by Head of Press National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission, Emmanuel Onjoku, says the increases took effect from January 1, 2024. The federal government also approved increases in pension of between 20 and 28 percent for pensioners on the defined benefits scheme in respect to the six consolidated salary structures with effect from January 1, 2024. We also informed you that the House of Representatives Committees on Petroleum Resources, Downstream and Midstream have addressed concerns over the ongoing fuel scarcity in Nigeria, assuring citizens of the availability of petroleum motor spirit, also known as petrol, in the country. Speaking premium motor spirit, also known as petrol in the country. Speaking to journalists from the House of Representatives Press Corps, the chairman of the committees, Ikenga Umo Gugo Chinyere and Henry Okoje, who attributed the fuel supply disruption to logistical challenges faced by transport workers, assured the challenges have been addressed following engagement with key stakeholders in the distribution chain. Well, in of our news bulletins, a form of update you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery, and Apple Store. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. For more stories in the world of business, let's join Joy Uchejim to keep us up to speed. What is happening, Joy? Thank you, Simi. On business, the Central Bank of Nigeria has justified its reliance on the loan deposit ratio to control the country's rising inflation, saying it is ready to do whatever it takes to reduce the inflation rate. The CBN's acting director of the Banking Supervision Department, Adetona Dedeji, who spoke on CBN Talk Today, a podcast recently uploaded to the bank's website titled Loan to Deposit Ratio Adjustment, says the use of loan deposit ratio as a control measure for inflation started in 2019 when it was observed that there was a massive slowdown in credit growth. Speaking about the nexus between the LDR and rising inflation, he said the last Monetary Policy Committee decided to purge the financial system of excess cash by raising the monetary policy rate. Meanwhile, the Presidential Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms Committee is set to hold public engagements on fiscal and tax reforms starting in Lagos on Thursday. The committee's chairman, Taiwo Oyedele, said in a statement on, th on Tuesday on X that the team would consult with stakeholders in Lagos and Abuja as a part of a renewed effort to review the national tax policy. The Lagos session will take place on May 2nd, followed by another in Abuja on May 6, 2024, with the theme, Proposed changes to the national tax policy, tax laws, and administration. Oyedele says such public engagements aim to gather input from stakeholders on proposed reforms to the country's tax system, which the government hopes will boost economic growth and improve revenue collection. That's it on Business News. Back to you, Simi. Thank you very much, Joy. And on the foreign scene, diplomats from the G7 industrialized nations have urged officials at the International Criminal Court not to announce war crimes uh, uh, charges against Israel or Hamas officials amid concerns that such a move could disrupt the chances of a breakthrough in ceasefire talks. Israeli politicians, including the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, have suggested that the ICC could press charges imminently after an investigation launched in 2021 that covered events starting in 2014. The inquiry has also been looking at Israel's construction of settlement in occupied territory.
A Greek court's decision to drop criminal charges against dozens of international aid workers accused of espionage and facilitating the illegal entry of migrants into the country has been met with jubilation. A three-member judicial council convening on the North Asian Isle of Lesbos ruled there was insufficient proof to pursue the case against 35 mostly German nationals. Lawyers representing the accused described the decision as a good day for humanitarians at a time when life-saving solidarity work had become increasingly criminalized. All up next is Entertainment Report on News Now. In another monumental feat, popular Nigerian musician Bona Boy has become the African artist with the highest grossing venue in the United States. In a post by Touring Data on X, it was revealed that Bona Boy's 2024 concert at the TD Garden Arena in Boston grossed $1.593 million, thereby surpassing the previous African record is set at Madison Square Garden in 2022. In his history-making concert, Bonaboy sold out the 19,000 capacity TD Arena Garden in Boston as part of the stops for his I Told Them tour that has already grossed over $11 million from 11 reported shows of the 22 stops. Finally on sports, the Nigeria Football Federation NFF has said announced announced for the new Super Eagles coach Finidi George as soon as the new makes the 53 year old was appointed as the substantive coach of the team on monday having also taken charge of the team on an interim basis after the departure of portuguese coach jose pesero fididi is the super eagles 27th coach having previously served as pesero's assistant for 20 months he was a member of ivory coast silver winning team at the 2023 africa cup of nations and served as interim captain of the squad during against Ghana and Mali in Morocco last month. Well, that's it on news. Now, many thanks for watching. See you next time.